Hi, I'm Staff Sergeant Stuart Costello from 161 Squadron 254 Medical Regiment. Uh, as a medic, the most satisfying you can do is to treat someone and to have a positive outcome at the end. So actually performing first aid or some sort of treatment on a casualty is brilliant. A lot of the reserves are clinicians, so they bring specialist skills from their own uh, as healthcare professionals. Uh, we provide front, uh, basically a point of wounding care for um, soldiers or in nowadays even civilians on peace, uh, peacekeeping operations. So we, we're the, the primary response to anyone who gets injured and then we move them back through roll one and eventually they'll go on to hospital care. I'm Private Sam Trelaw, um, part of 254 Medridge. Um, I am a medic in the Army Reserves. Um, my day job, I'm a uh, UAV pilot and specialist surveyor, specialising in hydrographic surveys. Since I was a kid, I've done cadets um, and then as a natural progression, um, sort of a, a proper service. Always like the idea of serving in the army. Um, however, I like the freedom of sort of getting the best of both worlds with the army reserves. Uh, role one is your initial point of wounding. Um, so your first point of contact would be one of us as CMT on the ground, um, and we will be able to stable stabilise any injuries, uh, stop any catastrophic bleeding, maintain any airways. Role two facility would be an MTF or a medical treatment facility. Uh, in there, you would have a team of nurses and doctors and you'd have more specialist kit. Um, inside of that, you'd receive your uh, primary and secondary surveys, you'd do head-to-toe survey. Um, you'd also receive any more life-sustaining and life-saving treatment there. From uh, MTF, a Roll 2 facility, you'd be moved back to a Roll 3. Um, like it's been in the news, it's been like Camp Bastion. Um, there it is a full hospital on the ground. Um, it's further away from the point of wounding, obviously for safety. Um, however, there you've got everything that you need from um, MRI machines, X-ray machines, everything you need is there. Um, and then from that point, with your doc being treated by doctors, you could be held for a week, maybe two weeks. From there, you'd be moved back to Britain, um, back to Birmingham um, and Silly Oaks, where you'd receive further ongoing care and treatment. Um, so this is the um, Battlefield Ambulance, uh, part of the role we provide is uh, medical evacuation. You have a vehicle commander which is usually the senior uh, medical um, person on the vehicle and you'll also have a junior medic who will sit in the back with the uh, casualty. So normally we would have in here uh, all the equipment you'd expect to see on the back of a normal ambulance. So we have uh, defibrillators, we'll have monitoring equipment so uh, we can monitor three leads on the chest, uh, so monitor their heart, their oxygen saturations and uh, other clinical items as well like that. And the rest of it is we either fill in where there are gaps in the regular army or we can actually go as a formed unit if we need a, if there's a surge and we need greater capacity then the reserve will actually deploy as formed units and be a, a unit of the army. The, the opportunities are endless. I'm studying a master's degree in disaster healthcare which is funded fully by the army so there's the professional side of it, there's the social side of it and there's the actual the medical skills. So it's a very, there's lots of different things you get from it. Good physical activity, so you get good training. There's lots of sport, there's lots of adventure training. There is, okay, it does, you do have to put work in, but you get a lot out of it.